Welcome to the show. We are tuned in for real life stories with real life people who have overcome adversity and healed their life. I am your host, Victoria Johnson, teacher trainer and coach trainer for the Heal Your Life certification program and best selling author of Do That and Then Some Transform Feelings of Less Than to More Than Enough. As Louise Hay always said, the point of power is in the present moment, so let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this last session, session number six in this series uh, of Heal Your Heart. Today's topic is prosperity and abundance, which is always so great to talk about. And I'm really excited to have you all here today. Thank you so much for joining and welcome. So as we get started, I thought I would just do a little uh, meditation to kind of help us uh, get focused on the call and maybe uh, not be thinking about the things we have to be doing or the things that we were just doing. So go ahead and just settle in. Take a nice couple of deep breaths. Close your eyes. Oh, know that today is full of wonderful and amazing things for you. In the infinity of life where I am, all is perfect, whole, and complete. I am one with the power that created me. This power has supplied me with an abundance of all that I shall ever need or want. My breath is abundantly supplied. I deserve to breathe just because I exist. All my other needs are abundantly supplied. Everything I need to know is revealed to me. Everything I need comes to me in perfect time-space sequence. I deserve to experience all this because I exist. It is my birthright to prosper in every area of my life. I am one with the ocean of life and I rejoice that it is so. I am totally open and receptive to the abundant flow of prosperity that the universe offers. All my needs and desires are met before I even ask. I am divinely guided and protected and I make choices that are beneficial to me. I rejoice in the success of others knowing that there is plenty for all of us. I am constantly increasing my conscious awareness of abundance, and this reflects in a constantly increasing income. My good comes from everywhere and everyone. All is well in my world. Just take a couple of deep breaths again. Let those words really absorb. And when you're ready, you can go ahead and open your eyes and return your consciousness to this webinar. Didn't that feel good? Yeah. So did anyone have uh, anything come up for them during that short meditation that they would like to share with the group? Love you. <clears throat> I did. Um, lately, I've been very, very grateful. Um, things at work for me have gone swimmingly, <laughs> swimmingly. Uh, I don't want to brag, but I work less hours and get paid the same. And we even had a raise. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, universe. <laughs> <clears throat> This makes me so happy. And, you know, this is one of the things we're going to talk about today is celebrating abundance and prosperity, maybe in ways that we don't always see them. 
So for example, working less hours and still being paid the same or in Flavio's case, getting a raise as well, right? Um, and you know, what, yes, it's amazing. And what made me think of this is I started keeping track in a notebook, you know, with everything that's happening in the world right now, um, a lot of people have a little bit of stress about money. So I started keeping track in a notebook, just, it's just the back of my journal, right? Just on the back page of my journal, different places that money is showing up. And it's surprising because it's made me look at things a little differently. For example, um, I bought something the other day and I, I received a gift with purchase with it, right? So to me, that was abundance flowing to me. And, you know, even though I was putting out money, I was receiving. Right? So I choose to be in that energy of receiving. And uh, some of the other things, you know, were just simply, you know, um, talking to the bank and getting my interest rate increased for my savings account you know, uh, moving some money off of a credit card and into a line of credit. So you're saving money on the interest. Like this is all abundance flowing to us, right? And so thank you so much for mentioning that, Fabio. Anyone else have anything come up for them during the meditation? Okay, so I'm going to move right into uh, some of the things that I wanted to share with you today. And, you know, specifically when we think about prosperity, often our minds go to money. But as we all know on this call that there are many different types of prosperity and abundance, you know, the material, the mental, the spiritual. And so many of us have used this time to really increase our spiritual abundance. Can I get nod, heads nodding if that's true? <laughs> yes. And so all of these things really need to be celebrated. And as we celebrate, we go into that energy of joy, right? That emotion of joy that we talked about a few weeks back, you know, on that emotional guidance scale that we talked about. And, you know, when we can go from happiness to joy, we just draw so much of that back into our world. So I'm feeling fabulous this morning. I'm probably going to smile the entire <laughs> webinar. <laughs> so feel free just to interject anytime. Uh, so just remembering, of course, that it's not how much we have. It's just how happy we are with what we have. And, you know, we, we, yesterday I was listening to a, a webinar or a podcast and they were talking about how things like um, when people win the lottery, they quite often within eight years have lost all of the money. And they're like, why does this happen? And the person explained it as, as having this thermostat. And, and so it's the same with weight loss. 98% of people, isn't that a staggering figure? 90%, 98% of people gain back the weight that they lose, right? So it's because we have this thermostat and it's set to our comfort zone, right? And when we go you know, above that and change things or below that and change things, we're not comfortable unless we move the thermostat. So if the thermostat stays the same, then we are going to somehow sabotage that and get us back into that comfort zone. I, I didn't explain it as well as they did, but I hope that makes sense to you all. So, you know, as we talk about our uh, material prosperity and our spiritual and emotional prosperity and abundance in our lives, just thinking about that thermostat, and it's a great visual, even if we just, you know, can focus on turning it up a degree or two, right? Then, it, then we can go a little degree or two farther from that. And so what I wanted to uh, do to, with you today is a couple of really fun things. Um, and... I just wanted to talk about where you have been receiving prosperity in the last month. So, you know, this could include like what Flavio mentioned, uh, working less hours for greater pay, right? Maybe uh, it was uh, a Zoom date with a, a friend that made you feel really abundant. Um, maybe you treated yourself to something that you wouldn't normally do, maybe flowers that you've, you know, picked from a garden anything like that. So um, I would love to hear some sharing where you have received prosperity in the last month. Charlotte. <laughs> um, I was at, uh, I, I have a house on the lake, mm -hmm. which I'm trying to sell so I can move to, 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 to Ottawa. 
But uh, last Saturday I was there. It was a beautiful day. The dock had been put into place. And of course, there's nobody there because nobody's allowed uh, on their boat or, or out. So uh, first of all, I saw an osprey. He was fishing. I said, I'd love to see him catch a fish. Boom, caught a fish. <laughs> it was a little far away. I'd like to see it closer. Boom. Then otters came swimming by, but they were way out there. And I said, I would really like to see you guys closer by playing. They literally came right in front of me, playing around. Once sat up on a rock a couple of feet away from me and ate its fish. Then there was a loon and he was also far away. And I said, I'd really like to see you close by. He literally went under the dock, popped up and just stared me in the eye. And it was like everything I was asking for was coming to me in, in, in that hour that I sat there. It was just incredible. <laughs> it was uh, incredible. That is incredible. And thank you for sharing it. it. It made me think of, I remember there being um, a book or a parable of, you know, this, this young girl and how she just drew all the animals of the forest to her. That is incredible abundance. Oh, I'm yes. so happy for yes. you. Yes, yes. Answering what I was asking for within minutes. It was like, wow. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Sarah, you had your hand up. Yeah, thank you, Victoria. I was thinking uh, when I wanted to start studying here, I was thinking that the tuition fee might be really much for me because uh, the exchange rate for my country was totally different from the Canadian dollar. And I did it. I said, that's my path. I'm going through this and I will pay for that. And because of the uh, COVID-19 and uh, more than a month that we had to do the online tests. And uh, so a part of the tuition fee just refunded to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much, but every cent is remarkable for me because it's like the abundance coming to me and I'm prosperous. That doesn't matter how much it is. So that is an amazing story, Sarah. Congratulations <laughs> on that. Thank and, you. You know, I think there's a great lesson in there is that you stretched, right? You stretched, you moved that thermostat. Yeah. Right? And you, gotta, uh, you know, Victoria, I've learned last week, I said that when I want to do something and I receive the signs that are showing me that you're totally in a right path, I just don't uh, pay attention to the material uh, money or anything. Just uh, spirituality goes me, I mean, um, uh, leads me to this way and says, okay, don't pay attention to the numbers. Just go for that. And I've learned to do this and it's working. It's really working. <laughs> Love it. Who else wants to share about prosperity they have received in the last month? Uh, Heike, go ahead. Um, I, I drive a very economic car and I learned that um, this model will be discontinued and they will um, change to electric cars. And here on Vancouver Island, I'm not convinced that that technology is good. And I thought, oh, I should maybe get another one of that. So I, I'm good until electric cars are totally developed. But then the COVID-19 thing happened and, you know, who would buy a car at this time? <laughs> The dealership called me and had said to me that they have those great models and this is the last model of, of this, which already I had in my mind. And they have super special deals. And I said, well, honestly, it's not the time to buy a car. And she said, just give us a chance and we'll... So now to make a long story short, I got a brand new car and I think I got five years of they are doing the oil changes for me. I have a better model with four wheel drive and nothing, not a cent goes out more for me. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you. So I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> but it was just a thought and I thought, oh, that would be nice. But then I left it and there they called me. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful example of law of attraction right there. Beautiful. Uh, Hasina, I would love to hear something from you, um, being from India and a different culture, uh, what it is that you have received in prosperity in the last month. You know, whether it's... Yeah, I did my first Zoom workshop on it for HYA. And uh -huh. this was the first time I'm receiving money in my account through workshop. 
Otherwise, I'm a physician. I only get cash. This was the first time. It was such a joyous experience. The first time in my life. (laughs) (laughs) That is great. I had 14 participants and all of them paid. Oh, congratulations. (laughs) Really great. Miracles are just happening every day. Pardon me? Miracles are happening for me just every day after the H12 training. <laughs> Beautiful. You know what? I would love if you could all, if you all have a pen and paper to write that down. It's an amazing affirmation. Miracles are happening for me every day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Miracles are happening for me every day. Thank you for that. And it's funny, you know, um, when, when uh, financial prosperity shows up from places that we're not used to, it's just so much fun. And uh, it's just a different energy. Sure. And I had clients like this from all parts of the world, from UK, from Qatar, from Muscat, from India, from everywhere. Such a nice workshop. I didn't (laughs) expect it to be so successful. (laughs) It's really nice. (laughs) Well, the universe always has your back. I always say when we're on the right track, everything just works out. Yes, that's right. Yes, beautiful. Someone else want to share? Hi, it's Jacqueline. I'll share. Hi, Jacqueline. Morning, good morning, everyone. Um, on Friday, I found out that um, I'm graduating from my internship program, so I'm going into a new career starting on Monday. Oh, I got uh, goosebumps! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going into healthcare, health healthcare area. Mm-hmm. I've been doing uh, business and public policy for a few years, uh, mainly administration. I'm 48, so this was really scary for me. Uh, making a, a change at this age, but um, I worked at it. I believed, I prayed, and then I got the good news on Friday that we're graduating. And so I start on Monday, got a good salary. I was so overwhelmed with joy. I cried tears of joy, <laughs> and um, I was just feeling good all day. That over all weekend, actually, I just starting to come down and starting to focus on getting ready for my new career starting tomorrow. So that's my abundance. (laughs) Jacqueline, congratulations. Thank you. And that is just such a huge accomplishment. And when I think about this transition that you're making at this period in your life, like it's so it's it's like graduating to the next level where you'll really be able to impact people through the healthcare system and through uh, supporting people. I'm just so happy for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It feels so great. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's a perfect segue into what my next question was. So thank you for that, Jacqueline. Um, I'd love to hear uh, things that are in your life already that you consider to be um, prosperity or abundance in your life. So maybe it's 18 grandchildren, you know, whatever it might be. What do you have abundant in your life right now? Go ahead, Daisha. Um, I have an abundance of time right now because there's just time is open right now. So it's, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching the, pa- the faces of people laughing, uh, listening, because obviously they can really relate. Mm-hmm. Isn't it great, though, to have this time to do the things that we've been wanting to do when we have time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how have you been using your time? I I have been using my time to kind of calibrate myself to be ready for what I want because I realize I have a lot of conflicting interests and um, desires. That So I'm trying to get that all um, together within me so that I can experience manifesting abundance. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, I'm going to share with you a little bit later on, uh, if time permits, uh, some ways to to kind of narrow down those conflicting messages in our lives and find out what it is that we really want, right? Because we sometimes say things like, you know, uh, I want to paint my house. Well, if I really wanted to paint my house, I'd probably go to the store and buy paint, right? And, and then I would start painting. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, it's easy to say these things. I want to lose 10 pounds. Well, then I need to stop eating cookies, right? So, you know, really 
narrowing down, do I actually want it? Or is it just kind of a habitual thing that I'm saying that I want? Right. So, oh, congratulations, Daisha. That was a great one. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's hear some more current abundance in uh, your life. Sarah. Yeah, uh, same as Daisha, I wanted to say time because uh, it's, as you said, narrowing down. It's a part of the general part that helps us all to think more that what we are going to do and start doing everything that we were waiting for a long time that we didn't have enough time. For me, uh, happiness is also the abundance now because every day I'm working more on that because of the... uh, desires that I've had for a long time and maybe I didn't have the courage to take a step for that the time and the happiness that are working for me helping me to get more courage to get ready as Daisha said to get prepared for uh, a really uh, upcoming future Um, and for example I'm doing my vision boards that I was waiting for a long time to start doing that and um I'm doing it and I feel really good for that. I, good. I, I'm getting ready for the more miracles that I was waiting for to coming through. Yes. And you know, there's just something about being open and receiving that. Um, Hasina, did I see that you, you kind of lit up there? Were you wanting to share as well? Yes, Victoria. I'm having an abundance of health this year. Oh, it's beautiful. Just COVID, I was I was actually locked up for the past nine months due to Addison's disease. Now I'm perfectly normal, doing my workouts two hours a day, and I'm having an abundance of health. That's oh. what COVID did to me. <laughs> so <happy. laughs> oh, congratulations on your abundance of health. Yeah. Beautiful. Maureen. Good morning. Hi, I have an abundance of connection. Ah, tell us more. I've um, been desiring, um, putting it out there, writing affirmations to connect with people from all over the world. And that is starting to happen. I'm connecting all over the world with people. Um, My goal is to help people in, in the medical health field. The people that I've connected with, we're looking at creating some type of app to help medical professionals get access to meditations, affirmations, uplifting inspirational messages, and just connecting with all those out there that want to help. It's 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 a wonderful process. So more connection now than I had before being in my home and not going out. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Congratulations on that. So Hasina, she's a physician? Yeah, I'm I'm a homeopathic physician, actually. Uh, I'm sorry, a what? Homeopathic physician, clinical nutritionist. Oh, nice. Wonderful. Well, congratulations on your healing. That's beautiful. Yeah, and it was was with no medicines, actually. Only Louis' affirmations and... (laughs) Exercise. What a story. That is so wonderful. Good for you. Uh, <laughs> thank you both for sharing. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about this question for myself, so I'm going to be a participant here and answer for me and say that what I have had an abundance of is spiritual growth. And, you know, uh, I think, you know, like a lot of things, uh, sometimes we'll focus on one thing more than the other. And I had noticed that over the last several months, uh, I'd kind of been a bit of a slacker, right? I was in that just uh, going with the flow mode and and loving it, but not really stretching, not really wanting to grow. And so um, I have formed the habit of daily meditation and no matter what, like it's a no matter what habit, you know, in the past it's been, oh, when I feel like it habit, right? And so uh, it's really been great for me and I've been studying and journaling and just really having this uh, uh, just abundance of joy and growth in my life and oh, life is so good. So it is. Yeah. So it is. <laughs> Does anyone else want to share on that? No? Okay. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the 
negative messages that sometimes we have turned into beliefs in our life about uh, abundance and about prosperity. And so for me, uh, I know some of the things that were holding me back, and I was journaling about this the other day, is uh, I was raised, um, we were poor farmers. And I'm not saying that as a criticism, it's just how it was, right? And, but I remember my parents, uh, you know, they, they struggled and there was, there was a lot of um, claiming of that phrase, poor farmers, right? And um, so I think that I just really learned to believe that it needed to be a struggle when it comes to money, that it needed to be a struggle. And, you know, maybe if you worked really, really hard and you were really, really lucky, you'd, you'd have a little, a little bit extra. Um, but never in my wildest dreams was I thinking about abundance. I was thinking about getting by. And so for me, that formed a belief system, um, you know, and uh, save your money for a rainy day, you know, and, and uh, I had that conversation so many times with my father, save your money for a rainy day. And I'd be like, dad, it's raining right now, right? Like, what do you think I'm saving, right? And so just really shifting that mindset of scarcity to there will always be enough. Right. It's like what we were saying earlier, when you're on the right track, everything just works out and there'll always be enough. And so I'd love to hear some of your uh, beliefs that you're working on transforming that that you've picked up at some point in your life. Go ahead, Heike. Yeah, kind of similar to you. My parents always had that. Uh, we've got to hang on to the money because it goes out faster than it comes in. And always, um, yeah, kind of, I was brought up with the fear that money is never enough. And I didn't realize how that um, impacted my life too. That just kind of, that is your normal. But then I started daring, you know, just like some of you uh, mentioned too, I, I just started my wish lists and I, I wanted to get out of that that habit but um, I learned you really have to release that, that belief before you can dream. So it kind of goes parallel. Um, I, I'm still a true believer. Write your list of what you want. And uh, once it's on paper, then, you know, believe that you deserve it and then it can happen. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, I think that... that um, when we're taught, you know, hang on to your money and so on. I mean, that's good advice in that, you know, we need to be good stewards of what we have. I remember taking a course a long time ago from Cheryl Richardson. It was um, practice building workshop. And, you know, she talked about be a good, one way to manifest more money in your life and more abundance in your life is to be a good steward of what you already have. And, you know, it really made me look at things differently. And so it's not that I was, um, doing it out of fear, but when I was when I was setting money aside, I was simply being a good steward. I wasn't like, oh, I need to put this aside because Lord knows the furnace could break, you know, or something like that, right? So just being a good steward of of what we do have. Anyone else want to share some of those belief systems, Sarah? Um, I want to add that uh, I remember the community that I was uh, grown up in. They believed in uh, destiny. They said, uh, this is everyone's uh, destiny and nobody, nobody can do anything for that. And they had an expression. They said, the destiny is written on the forehead of people. And uh, that's what it is. And I've heard it a lot of times during my childhood. And I started doing something that was completely different. I said, so I was asking my mom every time, so why are we born if we have the destiny here? So why I'm here? I can do nothing to change anything. But I started doing some changes to know that I have some power inside me or anywhere. I didn't know that's inside me. After that, I realized that. So I can do something to change my life in a way that I really like. What are my interests? I can think about that and I can go for that. And also, I remember that um, because my mom was an employee and she always counted on every sense that she had during the month. But at the same time, 
uh, I realized that she had an unconscious um, power or a thought or belief that made her do something, although she didn't have the money for. And she thought that when I want to do this, the money comes to me. They didn't. She didn't know that it, it is her belief. She was counting on every cent, but. Uh, this is really uh, feeling good for me, although I was uh, grown up in that community, but uh, in, in our unconscious and as it's our own um, inner power, we have all these thoughts or beliefs. We, we just need to evolve it, develop it. Absolutely. And, uh, and we do have that, that choice. And I know that um, in different cultures, we have these different practices, like you mentioned. And, you know, I know in some other cultures, when a child is born, they will have, um, based on their time of birth and date of birth and so on, you know, basically their destiny read out for them. And, and then, you know, I think what happens too sometimes, you know, parents, loving, well-meaning parents will treat that child according to that. And so they form that belief system within the child as well. So this is really important sharing in how, you know, we've got these different beliefs and then we'll move into, you know, changing those beliefs as well. Does anybody else want to share anything? Flavio. Hi there. Uh, So, yeah, with me uh, growing up in the old country, my father is an accountant or he still is an accountant. And, uh, uh, through his loving and caring ways, <laughs> as he saw the world, I guess somehow his ideas got planted in my head as to his thoughts of, of lack of money and abundance. And now, after having taken the workshops, I understand why he is an accountant. You know, if he controls the money, he'll always have enough. But funny, after going through the trainings, now I, I've been able to let that go and I can see myself feel more prosperous in, in my own ways. And talking to him, he's still talking about lack of money. And now now he believes that food's going to run out worldwide. So he's he has a little plot where he's planting his vegetables. And nothing against doing that. It's just the reason why he's doing it for him. And I think, oh my God, he sounds so stressed and so full of fears that I am so glad that for myself that I'm not there, that I don't have to fear, you know, life that way. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, You know, that is a a beautiful example of abundant thinking as well as moving through and transforming that belief. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll send him loads of love. Oh, yes. Loads of love. Absolutely. Uh, So I wanted to share with you some of the universal principles that apply to us all. Um, and that is your personal beliefs and feelings create your personal reality. So I'm going to say that one more time. Your personal beliefs and feelings create your personal reality. And Flavio gave us a perfect example of that. Um, so, you know, someone who is, is believing that there's scarcity, you know, is creating, is creating that reality for themselves. Someone who is believing that there is abundance is finding abundance wherever they turn, right? And so, you know, we, as we've, we've all learned and shared many times, thoughts become things. So just being mindful and, and again, not judging yourself or judging other people because sometimes, you know, we're going to maybe pop into some fear thinking for a while or pop into worry um, and, and, and that's okay, you know, as long as we're recognizing it and moving through it. And I, I just think that that's always part of the process and to just trust it and, and be kind and loving and compassionate to yourself and to others. And knowing that, again, your mind is creative, right? Your mind is creative. And, and so I'm going to use Sarah's example about her tuition. She said I didn't figure out how she was going to get money back, how, she was, how it was going to be more affordable. She just, you know, said, yeah, this is what I want to do. I am going to, it's a, it's a calculated decision that I'm making and I'm going to do it. And, you know, her creative mind in the universe conspired to return some of that money to her. It's just a beautiful thing. Uh, Charlotte, drawing the, the critters and the birds. <laughs> Our minds are creative. 
They really truly are. And, you know, the things that we can create in our lifestyle, even just the things that we recognize that are already there that we're not even seeing, right? Using that creative part of our mind to notice it. So maybe just look around where you are right now and, you know, see, see what's there that's, that's bringing you joy. Just using that creative mind to find something that makes you feel good that pulls you into that mindset of abundance. Uh, I'm looking up, uh, my oldest boy is going to be 35 next month. This month, oh my goodness, this month. And I'm looking at a picture of him when he was about six months old. And he's smiling and he's got this little suit on. And I feel incredibly abundant as a mother just by connecting with that picture that I might not have even noticed had I not looked around looking for the beautiful abundance and prosperity in my life. So it's a great little practice, hey? You know, you can be in your car or walking down the road and just looking around and finding that beautiful prosperity and abundance wherever we turn. Knowing that this is not just for the uh, awake or spiritual enlightened people, that it's for everyone, right? We're all, every single person on this planet you know, as far as I'm concerned, every fish, every plant, everything is connected to this beautiful divine wisdom and all part of this great energy. And that, you know, it's okay to just accept that there's always enough. There's always enough for everyone. There's no need to have any comparison. There's no need to um, set ourselves apart from other people. Just knowing there is enough for everyone. doesn't matter what you're going through, whether it's, whether it's food, whether it's uh, sunshine, whether it's money, whatever it may be, there's always enough for everyone. Anybody have anything coming up that they want to share? Okay, I'll keep going forward. I just wanted to say that, you know, the real key of this, again, is just recognizing it and to be in that mindset of gratitude and appreciation, I think one must be in a place where they uh, are really learning to love and connect with themselves uh, on a deeper level all the time. And the more that we love and accept ourselves, the more we can appreciate and attract this beautiful abundance and prosperity into our lives. Um, So I just had a funny example pop into my head I'm going to share with you. And I don't know if it's the same for men, Flavio, but it's definitely this way for women. If we leave the house in our pajama pants or sweatpants and, you know, we've got hair sticking out the side or, you know, haven't had a shower in two days, we are pretty much guaranteed to run into the last people we want to run into (laughs) looking that way, right? and. It's just, it's just all part of that um, self-judgment piece, right? So we're, we're judging ourselves and, and, you know, we're creating this worst case scenario in our mind that then comes to fruition. When we are in this beautiful place of self-love, I think we look at everything differently. We look at ourselves differently. We look at every person differently. And So say, for example, we run into that person that we didn't want to run into when we, when we look like we just crawled out of, you know, uh, the bed after being there for three days or something, right? Then, you know, it's just a completely different mindset because we love ourselves and we accept ourselves and, and we, um, we carry on with more confidence. And I think that when we have that love and acceptance for ourselves, we draw in prosperous relationships. How many of you have ever held back from a family gathering or a gathering with friends because you weren't feeling good about yourself at that moment? Yeah, me too. Me too. So it's, a, it's, a, it's something that I think applies to so many of us. We, when we're feeling really good about ourselves, we're putting out that energy that we just want to expand in our lives. We want to expand in every way. So we want to expand in love. We want to expand financially. We want to 
expand in our relationships. We want to expand in our education. Uh, we want to expand in our career. Just really being in that place of expansion and just accepting the process and the growing of the process. I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys on that. Sarah. I want to talk about the uh, limited beliefs, as you said, uh, Victoria, that to expand these um, situations, because mm -hmm. when I think about whatever I really want to have uh, during the day, especially these days that I have uh, enough time, I realize that there are some unconscious beliefs and something coming to me that is showing me that maybe you don't deserve it. It's not telling me you don't deserve it, but it's something in my gut that is just keeping me saying, uh, thinking like that. And um, I think working on these beliefs is really important. And uh, it starts from self-love. When you give love to yourself and repeat the affirmations of I'm lovable, I love myself, I celebrate, uh, it, it came to me uh, when I was dreaming, I don't know how it just popped out. And when I woke up, I realized that I have to write it down. And it was like, I celebrate my life because I'm a perfectionist person and I always wanted to have everything perfect in my life. So Uh, every moment I'm thinking about future and what I'm going to do and in the best way. And nowadays I'm getting better by the time that I have to work on myself. But um, I, I sometimes forget what I've done until now to yeah. appreciate myself, to give love my, to myself, treat myself to something, to be grateful for uh, uh, whatever I've done until now to be here in this moment. Mm -hmm. And um, I think this self-love really helps for the limited beliefs that we have. And it starts from here to get ready for the future and the miracles that we are waiting for. And sometimes we just ask, why don't the miracles come to me? They, they are all around here. You just need to uh, stay still and listen to them or see them and yes. embrace them. Oh, Sarah, thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, I really like that affirmation as well. Um, I think it would be a great journaling prompt if you wanted to write it down, what Sarah said, I celebrate my life. Like imagine finishing that 10 different ways. I celebrate my life, you know, by, or I celebrate my life because, I celebrate my life when. Be great, a great uh, journaling prompt. Oh, uh, Michelle, thank you for that affirmation. I love and celebrate my life. Beautiful, beautiful. I wanted to mention you touched on perfectionism too. And, and um, I think that that's something that we could talk about here for a minute when it comes to abundance. So often we hold ourselves back from celebrating our successes because it didn't go in a way that we thought was perfect, that we thought was the perfect way, right? And so, you know, maybe we've done this really great thing but we don't allow ourselves to feel the joy of it. And, you know, we can, you know, there was one uh, eye that was missing a dot or a T that was uncrossed, you know, and so we, we hold back. So I invite you today to just feel the joy, feel the joy of those things. And sometimes I like to ask myself, because I do have per perfectionist tendencies that I'm working on um, as well. And sometimes I like to ask myself, am I, holding myself to this standard because I'm so joyful and passionate about what I do that I want it to be just right? Or am I holding myself back from, from celebrating my successes or my holding on to this perfectionism because I have a belief that I will never be enough? And do you feel the difference there between those two energies, right? And so just when you catch yourself, judging yourself or holding yourself back, just asking yourself, where is this coming from? Is this coming from a place of joy and wanting everything to be just as good as it can possibly be? Or am I judging myself? Am I criticizing myself? Am I holding back to like negative beliefs? Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have anything they want to share right now? I'll share. Ms. Jackson. Yes. Okay, Jacqueline. Uh, 
recent, recently I started doing a mirror work again. Beautiful. Uh, mirror work. And it was hard at first. Um, but after a week of it, um, I came back to that quiet space where I can hear um, th that those loving thoughts. And, I, and after uh, two or three days, it, 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 my energy shifted. I was like, wow, this actually works. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a little bit doubtful, but um, I realized I was beginning to recognize those negative thoughts. So I could hear them. So my uh, mantra right now is um, I'm willing to like myself. I'm willing to li like myself. I have yes. good things happening. Um, like I'm experiencing abundance. But there's certain areas in my relationships that I'm stuck in. Mm -hmm. So that's the tool I'm using is I am willing to like myself. I am willing to learn to love myself. Yes. Um, more and I, more each day. Yeah. I was so amazed at, at, at how I felt uh, after doing it for two weeks. I told my daughter, um, I'm going to have to teach you how to do this, I told her, <laughs> because <laughs> it works and... Um, I just wanted to share that just in case somebody is, is doing that work out there as well. Thanks. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. And and I'm, you know, imagining that it was quite uncomfortable at first. Mm -hmm. But doesn't it feel good? I, I think everyone on this call here has done mirror work. Doesn't it feel good when you just have that eyeball to eyeball connection, soul to soul? It just goes so deep, mm -hmm. right? I feel like it's really healing, you know, every time. And it's, and it's always there for you. And uh, Jacqueline, we see a picture of you in your car. Um, so uh, I would encourage you to use your rear view mirror as well. Give yourself a little wink when you're driving in that car and, and just say, I'm willing to love you. I'm willing to love you. Sure. I will do that. Thanks. <laughs> You're very welcome. Michelle, uh, did you want to share something? I saw a little note pop up in the chat. Um, I Can you hear me? Yep. Yay. Um, I kind of feel like, Jacqueline, that when you start to redo some of the mirror work, that it's really scary that first few times that you're staring at yourself in the mirror. And it's, when, when you say eyeball to eyeball, it's not... It's, it's when you're trying to, you're trying to like not look at yourself and it's like, you have to look at yourself because that's what's there, but it's almost like you can't even draw attention to yourself. That's when I find like I have low days and then I have high days that there are days that I can look in the mirror and say that you're amazing and you're beautiful and you deserve all the love and abundance in the world. And then there's days that you wake up and you're just kind of like morning and there's nothing, nothing else there. And I don't know what else to, to give myself on those days like you just don't feel that there's if you it doesn't feel genuine or authentic when you're mm -hmm. using some of the some of the affirmations and that's like am i being a fraud when i'm doing it it's kind of that negative negative mm -hmm. belief in yourself like why am i doing this right so i just want to say that um uh first of all hasina i see your note and thank you for joining us today i'm going to be in touch with you about the podcast i'd love to hear your story on my podcast um michelle hi thank you thank you uh, michelle i want to go back to what you said because i think we can all relate to what you're saying um as far as some of the affirmations feeling fraudulent as we're doing them um Trust me, I've been there. You know, I've looked in the mirror and said, I love you. And I thought, yeah, right. <laughs> and I think everybody else has as well. And that it's okay to just keep connecting uh, with those affirmations in the mirror until you believe that they're true. And for those days that you come up blank, when you look in the mirror and you come up blank, here's something that I do. I connect with my inner child on those days. And I just look myself in the eye and I... Think about my little me, my inner child, and I just say three words, I've got you. Yeah. I've got you. And when I connect with her, that, then, then that gives me strength to keep going. No, that's a good one. That's a good one. Where I guess when I, I can look at myself and say, hey, we got this. Don't worry. Whatever yes. else is, we got this. Yes, absolutely, Michelle. Thank you for that. 
Um, we are uh, running out of time, so I'd, I'd like to, we're going to do a closing meditation here. Um, and then uh, maybe we can have a little discussion around that closing meditation. And anybody else want to share before we go into that? Flavio. Uh, yes, I do have gone through those uh, instances where some days I don't feel like saying a whole bunch of things in the mirror, but I do push myself and I do look at myself and I say, I love you anyway. And <laughs> the time that's good and okay. Walk away until the next time. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> this has been such a rich phone call with valuable information or webinar, I should say. Thank you for that, Fabio. And thank you for opening that door, Michelle, for this discussion. I, uh, I really appreciate that we are talking about the richness of spiritual growth when we're talking about prosperity and abundance. And I love you anyways. It's so accepting. You know, it's, it's really great. And uh, it's, it's just so healing for any uh, self-judgment that we've been having. So I wanted to talk to you just really quickly before we go into this about um, changing those negative beliefs. We all know using affirmations will help. Also, just really going back and examining, which is what we're going to do in this meditation. Um, you know, making a list of, of, of things that pop up that you recognize as negative beliefs, because once we recognize them, then we can really transform them. But we have to become aware of them first. So, you know, even if you just keep a note on your phone or a notebook at home somewhere where if something comes up, just jot it down in there. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it. Just jot it down so you can go back to it later. And, you know, knowing that you can release yourself from them it's something that you can do. And when you're ready, you will. And um, to just, you know, really be careful with who you're surrounding yourself with now. Because, you know, 10 years from now, you're going to look back at now and what your beliefs were at this system, at this time in your life. So just uh, recognizing who you're surrounding yourself, what influences in your life, what you're feeding your mind, right? Um, are you uh, going to sleep watching... Uh, killer zombie movies, you know, or are you feeding your mind nourishing thought? Just, just thinking about those things and reflecting on them and, you know, just picturing in your mind how you want things to be. Maybe you want them to be exactly as they are now. Um, maybe, you know, there's something that you're working towards. Just using those visualization tools as well and you looking to your you know, your higher universal mind to guide you. I believe with my entire being that each one of us carries a piece of that God intelligence, higher power, creator, universe inside of us. Connecting with that. Like, wow, that's in us. You know, it's just such a beautiful gift that, that we can utilize more and more and more. And, you know, you've probably heard people say that we only use whatever percent of it is of our brain. Right? I think it's like less than 10% of our brain or something. Think about how much universal power we're using. Like, you know, be like Heike and plug that baby in. <laughs> right? Let's plug into that universal, universal power. Absolutely. Okay, so if you're ready, let's do a little bit of a meditation around prosperity and abundance. Thank you so much. I just appreciate you all so much. Just taking a nice deep breath and relaxing. Letting your neck and shoulders relax and letting go. As you take some deep breaths, just letting a wave of relaxation move through your entire body. What is your greatest fear about prosperity? Are you willing to release that fear? Take a nice deep breath and tell yourself that you are willing to release any fear that you have about prosperity and replace it with total trust in the universe. Think about any past messages, 
the way we were raised with those belief systems and ask yourself, would I be betraying anyone if I was living a full and prosperous life? And then in your own mind, tell that person that you love them. And it is really okay for you both to receive the abundance of the universe. Do you believe that you deserve to receive? Do you believe that the more abundance you have in your life gives you more tools to help more people? A little while ago, we talked about old belief systems. Imagine those beliefs now, those old negative beliefs written on a blackboard in front of you. The nice big blackboards that we had in schools. Those negative beliefs are all written out there on the blackboard in front of you. Now reach down and pick up the eraser and erase them all. Using that chalkboard eraser and erasing all those negative messages and negative beliefs from the past. And when you have them all erased, go ahead and pick up that piece of chalk and begin to write your new beliefs about prosperity and abundance of all time. Financial, emotional, spiritual, relationship, love, all of the abundance, all of the prosperity. Continue to write down your new beliefs on that big chalkboard in front of you. Feel a sense of confidence in knowing that life always supports you and brings you what you need. Visualize what your life is like now that you have these new beliefs. And when you are ready, gently bring your awareness back to this room that you're in and back to this webinar. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Well, how fun was that? Didn't it feel so good to get that eraser out? Just erase all those old negative beliefs. We don't need them anymore. We don't need them. And we can choose our new beliefs and write those out in front of us, see them, visualize our life with these new beliefs and know that you deserve it all just as much as you deserve your next breath. Using that God mind part of you, the creator mind, universal mind, creating everything that you want in your life. So beautiful. Does anyone have anything they want to share before we close? Charlotte, go ahead. Um, just like the mirror work where you have to come, really have to work on it and say how much you love yourself and believe it. The same getting rid of all these old beliefs that have been with you for years and years and years. What really connected with me and I believe it was Louise Hay saying I am willing to let go because yeah. it's easy to say oh let it go oh yeah let go that you don't deserve let go that you're not lovable it's 
words, but willing to do it is a huge energetic step. Uh, it's not as much pressure as I have to let go and I'm not letting go. It's not that tug of war, but mm -hmm. just that really resonated and helped me a lot with moving towards those uh, objectives, willing to let it go. Beautiful. Mention that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. And I'm glad you did because it also reminds me of when with the mirror work. Uh, we can't always uh, resonate with words that we're saying. So we can be willing to. So when you're spending that time in the mirror using the same tactic that Charlotte just mentioned, I am willing to love myself. I am willing to forgive. I'm willing to believe that I am safe. Beautiful. Well, I thank you all for, this is, this is just, you know, another amazing time together. I can't believe that six weeks have passed. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm really excited about what I have coming up. It starts next week on Wednesday. It's the Conscious Living webinar series. I'll attach the link in the recording to that. Or you can just go to either one of my websites, thetraining.ca or victoriajohnson.org. And I look forward to seeing you there as well. Um, you guys, I'm going to miss these beautiful faces. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Victoria. You. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. For Thank you so much, Victoria. Blessing you, love and light. Bye all. Thanks, Bye. Victoria. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Love Bye, you all. Everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Lots of love. Lots of love to you all. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like to become an internationally certified Heal Your Life teacher and coach, please visit thetraining.ca. To be a guest on the show and share your story, please visit victoriajohnson.org. Thank you so much for joining us.